Okay, welcome to this tutorial on Microsoft Access. Mr. Morris here with you and just taking you through a few little tips and tricks in relation to Microsoft Access. Now you remember from last lesson we looked at Anderson's real estate as a case study and we went through the process of setting up a data dictionary. Now if you recall the data dictionary defines the data within a database uh, and it quite often is um, housing metadata and if you recall that definition it was data about data but just getting back to the idea of a flat file database um, for many businesses a flat file database is perfect uh, it contains one file and one table within that file so for things like address books electronic diaries recording marks etc a flat file database management system is perfect but one of the main limitations of a flat file database is that it results in this concept called data redundancy. Whenever you have redundancy or unnecessary duplication of data within a database, it is bad. Um, I'll take you through ways in which this database could contain data redundancy right at the end. I'll just scroll up now and take you back again to our example. So we looked at the setting up the different fields within our database and we spoke about the different data types. So far we know that text is alphanumeric data. That is, it can contain both text, alphabetic letters and, and also numbers. We have number um, and generally it was a, a whole number, an integer. So we said that number of bedrooms was suitable for that. We thought about Boolean being a, um, a checklist or a yes, no, true or false and we use the drop down list component for that. Currency was the weekly rent and that is recorded in that particular data set within the database and we also talked about currently occupied Boolean yes or no and there was our data dictionary. So if we scroll down now I'm going to get you to answer these questions uh, in the lesson that you complete today. But in terms of our database, I just want to now flick to Microsoft Access. Try that again. And you can see there my data is listed in the table. Now let's just point out a few things. We set up a input mask for our owner's phone number and I went through and added 03 for most of the uh, phone numbers because 03 is the area code for Victoria. If we go to number of pets you can see there it was uh, sorry the number of bedrooms that should be um, it was listed there and again this was all obtainable from the data. Pets allowed was a tick box again a yes no true or false so you could see that a number of properties allowed there we've got the weekly rent we've got the currently occupied. Um, if there is a ticket it means it is currently occupied. Okay, so one of the issues in terms of viewing this data on the screen is that being a flat file database that is one table highlighted here, you can see it very very quickly stretches off the screen. So we call this view or Access calls it data sheet view, more commonly known it's table view because it is essentially a two-dimensional table. If for instance we were to enter in another record, the easiest way to do that would be via a form. And so at this point what we're going to go and do is we're going to create and we're going to create a form. And it creates it based on the data in the table. So there's my form and currently it is in layout view. In order to enter data we ne it needs to be in form view. So you can see there that I can tab between the different fields. Down the bottom here record which is a complete a record which is a complete list of data um, is listed there and as I scroll through you can see my various records coming up. Okay so that's form view, form view and whenever you enter data into a form 
uh, provided that the table is not open, the form will automatically populate the table. Now I'm going to enter a new record in and that will be Mr. Peter Martinez. I'm just going to copy this over just to make it easy for myself. I scroll back again to phone number. Would have been far easier for me to have the paper based copy in front of me, but anyway. Okay, Mr. Martinez is going to buy another property. He's going to buy a villa, and the villa will be in 6 Morris Street, Morrisville. Interesting name, number of bedrooms, 3. No pets allowed there, and the weekly rent's going to be $250. Now you'll see, as soon as I enter that, it automatically formats that data for currency, and it's not currently occupied. So if I was to then close that form, I'll just save it as Anderson's for the moment. You can see that it comes up in my access window. There's the table view, and there's the form view. If I double click on the table view, you can see now that Peter Martinez has two records there and there and they are his two properties that he owns. Now if I wanted to sort the data, what sorting data is, is basically putting it in some sort of order. So I'm going to go to database tools, no that's not the right place. I'm actually just going to right mouse click is the easiest way to go and sort A to Z. And you can see there that it will sort based on the surname first, okay? Um, and you can see there it places Mr. Martinez's two records against each other there, all right? So just taking you through, that is setting up a form from a table, and I'll expect you to do that in today's lesson. So you need to set up a form, and you need to enter in a new record, and it's preferably Mr. Martinez's record um, with those characteristics. So if you need to pause the video here now, that might be an idea. Okay, so we've sorted our data into some sort of order, um, but one of the tasks in the worksheet asks you to create a report about the property showing the property type, property address, the number of bedrooms, pets allowed, weekly rent and currently occupied and the report should show the unoccupied properties and which properties allow pets. So I'm just going to drag this to one side for a second and I'm hoping that I'll be able to drag my database to this other side so I can see that. Okay, I'll just zoom that in for a second. All right, so now what I'm going to do is close my table, and yes, I'll save it for the moment, and I'm going to now create a query. Now, I'll just start by using the query wizard, and the type of query that I'll use initially will be the simple query wizard. So I'll just choose OK. Now, looking at the activity or the worksheet that I'm asking you to look at, it wants the property type, so I would click on that and hit over. Property address, over. Number of bedrooms, over. Pets allowed. Weekly rent, currently occupied. And I'll just hit finish there, or next. Okay. And I'm going to open the query for the moment. Okay. So just so you can see that in full screen, what it's done is it's gone through and show me all the properties in the flat file database. So there should be eight records, which there is. And 
it's basically just showing me those fields. It hasn't queried or it hasn't uh, asked a question of the database, which is essentially what querying is as yet. It's simply just shown me what is in those records. So this is where um, querying comes in. And what I'm going to do now is go back to the uh, home button and I'm going to choose the design view. Now you'll recall when we set up this flat file database we used the design view in the um, setting up of the table which was essentially our data dictionary to define the data. With the query now what we're going to do is we're going to tell the database what question we want to ask. We have the appropriate fields and first of all we're looking for unoccupied properties. So if I now go to the design view and where it says currently occupied, if it says yes that means it will return all the properties which are currently occupied. But if we write here the criteria equals no and I run the query you can see here that none of these records have been ticked. Okay, So these essentially are what the question was asking. Produce a query for all the properties which are currently unoccupied. And so if a, pr a person come into Randerson's Real Estate and said, okay, I want to know all of your properties which are currently unoccupied, the receptionist or the person running the database would be able to run this query for them. Now at this point we're going to save this query and down here you can now see that I've got three parts of my database. I've got a table, I've got a query and I've got a form. What I should do though is I should actually save it as a name that reflects the type of query it is. But I won't go into that just for the moment. So what we then would do is we would create a report which is a fancy way of producing this data from the query um, and you know it could be printed out generally reports are printed out so if I go to create and I'll just go to report wizard which is the easiest way what do I want yeah I want all of those I go next next do I want them sorted um, possibly you may wish them sorted based on the weekly rent, okay, ascending order. Just keep hitting next and finish. And you can see there that there are a few issues in terms of fields uh, going over um, the different records there. If I flip it to landscape mode, that doesn't make much of a difference. But what I can do is I can adjust the layout of this uh, query in the query design view. Okay, again, like table view and like report view, uh, sorry, query view, every view in Access has a design view. So I can move this stuff around to make it look a bit more appealing and basically fit it on the page. Um, and that's all okay. So I just move this stuff around. I'm just clicking and dragging here. Okay, so I've just adjusted a few of those things there. Um, you can even go in and adjust the title. So I might unoccupied properties. And if I go back into view, you can see that that could be nicely printed out. So I'm just going to save that and again that comes up there as a report and I'm just going to close that now. So just going back through that, I created the query. You'll recall the criteria for this query was is it currently occupied equals no. So the criteria was equals no, those properties that weren't currently occupied and when I ran that using a little exclamation mark these were the results I've got. Okay, Now I'm just going to close that one and I'm going to do a new query going back to our sheet again. It wants me to now 
complete a report using the same fields for which properties allow pets. So what I could possibly do is just copy that query and you can see here it's coming in as a copy of Anderson's query. I'm actually going to rename this and this is going to be allow pets and this one was going to be rename unoccupied properties sorry my typing is not too good tonight okay now the reason why I copied that instead of created I could have created it from scratch was because it was using essentially the same fields but the criteria was different so I'm going to go into allow pets now and you can see here that it looks exactly the same as the previous query so I'm going to get rid of that criteria allow pets is going to be equals yes remember these fields are boolean fields so the answer is yes no true or false and if I run that query then you can see that all of the fields that allow pets are ticked there. Again, so that's the result of typing in the criteria equals yes, pets allowed, and they are all the properties that allow pets. Do a report based on that. So I'll go into report visit again. Uh, this was the easier way to bring all the fields over for the report. I just click on the double arrow and go next and next. Uh, what shall we order it by? Weekly rent again, ascending order, and then we'll go next. And this time we'll go straight into landscape. And you can see there adjust the field width so that all fields fit on the page. And we'll go finish. So you can see there that there are our records the properties which allow pets. Now again you can see that our field names up the top here uh, are cut off so again I could go in and change the setup of that. I close print preview and that dumps me back to design view whereby I can change these. Now these are just um, field headers so I don't have to have the underscore there I can just type weekly rent and property type and I might just have address keep it simple address there again we'll go bedrooms move that across pets and again you can align this up and occupied okay so we'll go back into view that and you can now see that it should fit quite nicely on my a4 page which it does okay and you can see there it's dumped a, uh, a little footer in there with the date etc so um, there are my properties which allow pets and that's my report so I would save that again you can see my reports here my form and my queries now the last thing that I'll do is looking at a query that searches on two criteria so I'm just going to close allow pets there for a second and this may refresh the whole idea of creating a query again so I'm going to go to create and I'm going to go to query design view this time it's a bit of a different way of doing it but it will be useful when we start relational databases so I'm going to add the flat file database table which is Anderson's and I'm going to make that quite large okay we're going to go with again the same fields that we've been using for the others now you can do this one of two ways you can actually there's three ways I can drag that down to there so property type 
I can double click on it, property address, number of bedrooms, or I could actually choose it from the drop down menu. Whichever you prefer, I generally just double click, I find it the quickest. Uh, pets allowed, weekly rent, currently occupied. Okay, so a customer comes in and says, okay, I want a list of all the properties that are currently occupied where you allow pets. Okay, so what this is, is doing, it's combining two criteria um, and it's called a relational um, query. So what we're going to be doing now is in the criteria, we're going pets allowed equals yes, like we did before, currently occupied equals no. And when we run this query, we should find that there are two properties which will allow pets but are currently un um, unoccupied. Okay, so just looking back at that, I put two pieces of criteria in. This time we might even sort it based on the weekly rent. Again, ascending. I run it and you can see there that it's going from smallest to largest in terms of ascending. Again, you could, if you wanted to, create a or save that query. Um, you could also uh, create a uh, report from that as well. So I'll just close that. Do you want to save it? Yes, I do. It's going to be pets and unoccupied and choose OK. So you can see they're manipulated. Um, querying reports can be generated. And in the next lesson, what I'll do is talk about how this database can now contain data redundancy, which is something that we want to try to eliminate. Thanks for watching.